Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. News Radio 78, WBBM, Chicago. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Today we go back to the middle of the 19th century. We're in Paris. Twenty years have passed since Napoleon Bonaparte ruled half of Europe. The peasants are still poor, but the privileged are fewer. Changes are in the air. Not, however, in what people lived by, believed in. To be trusted is still a greater compliment than to be loved. To be faithful is the rock on which all marriages are founded. A man might look elsewhere, but a woman never. Madame, I wish to know, is there someone hiding here? No, monsieur. Supposing I were to open that closet door to see for myself. Husband, if you should find no one in there, all will be over between us. You threaten me. If there is no trust between us, there can be no marriage. Swear to me there is no one in there, and I shall believe you. Swear. I swear. <laughs> mystery drama, The Countess, adapted from the Honoré de Balzac classic, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Jerry Keene and stars Marion Seldes and Roberta Maxwell. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Once upon a time, there was a couple with entirely different tastes. One liked exotic things. I'll have a banana split with chicken livers. While the other was practical and down to earth. Uh, American cheese on white. Invariably, the exotic things she liked, he hated. Oh, look at this, a corduroy rug. Don't you just love it? No. And the practical things he liked, she loathed. I love it. I hate it. This went on at length until one day after disagreeing on how to get there... It's a right left. They went to a Buick dealer and were invited to inspect the Buick Skyhawk. She found the low, lean styling and things like the bucket seats and standard four-speed manual transmission exciting and exotic. Oh, it's so exciting and exotic. While he found the V6 engine, the practical hatchback, very down-to-earth. Oh, how practical and down-to-earth. Unfortunately, while they agreed on the Skyhawk, they couldn't agree on which Skyhawk. Air conditioning. Heater. White walls. Black walls. Home wheels. Upcaps. I want a stereo. We have a radio at home. Buick Skyhawk. It's exotic. It's practical. It's a little Buick for everybody. I'll drive. Uh, I'll drive. No, no, I'll drive. I'll drive. I'm driving. Here's a helpful do-it-yourself hint from the building pros at Edward Hines Lumber Company. If you want to build a fence, deck, shed, or even a boat dock, how can you make sure it'll be maintenance-free for years to come? The answer is to use pressure-treated lumber, the outdoor wood. It's chemically treated all the way through each piece. You can sink it into the ground, place it against masonry, even use it underwater. And your project will last for many years. And it weathers naturally to a pleasant driftwood tone, so there's no need to paint or stain it. Over one million feet of pressure-treated lumber has arrived at Heinz, giving you big selection and low carload quantity prices. Bring your ideas to any of the 27 Heinz Lumber stores, and one of Heinz' friendly pros will help you select the pressure-treated lumber you need for your project and deliver it. And while you're there, ask for a copy of Heinz' do-it-yourself literature on building wood decks. Start your outdoor project now. You and your whole family will have the whole summer to enjoy it. There are 27 Edward Heinz locations in Chicagoland to help you. See Edward Heinz Lumber at the corner of Main and Crystal Lake Avenue in Crystal Lake. Today, our guide to a strange mystery is the celebrated French author Honoré de Balzac. It is said he wrote from life, peopled his novels and stories with his friends and neighbors. 
Certainly, a no more extraordinary couple begin his story than the beautiful lady and handsome gentleman of middle years seated in a left bank cafe early one morning. Wrapped in each other, they do not notice they are being observed by young Charles, a student at the university who frequents that cafe for his breakfast. The proprietor sets down a small cup of coffee and wipes his hands on his apron. Bonjour, Charles. I brought you your usual. Thank you. Uh, who are they? Hmm? Who are who? That beautiful woman and that man with the tanned skin and the gray hair at the corner table. Oh, uh, monsieur and madame have only just moved into the neighborhood. I've not yet learned their names. <laughs> I must say, it's at their age to be holding hands and looking into each other's eyes. Oh, 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 oh. You think love is only for the very young, eh? 21 years like you, Jean? <laughs> of course not, but uh, that woman, I, I know her. Somewhere long ago, uh, something... Uh... Hey, 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 it's not so good to drink your coffee so quickly. Are you off already? Oh, I must. I'm late for class. I... I wish... I wish I could meet them, the, the lady particularly. <laughs> She's old enough to be your mother, mon petit. My mother? But not likely. I have been an orphan for as long as I can remember. Au revoir. Did you see that young man, Carlos? The one who just ran out of the cafe? Yes. Don't be angry with me, but... I feel I, I must leave here right away. My darling, we have only just sat down. Oh, do not argue. I shall tell you all when we're back at the hotel. I love this view. I don't think one chimney has changed on one rooftop in the last 20 years. <laughs> Did you bring out some bread for the pigeons? Bread for the... <laughs> Josephine, you didn't drag me back to our room to talk about feeding the pigeons. Oh, I'm sorry, Carlos. It was... Oh, it's so hard to explain. Is it the same trouble? Yes. Oh, I wish I could help myself. That boy... There is always a boy wherever we go. But what can I do? Every time I see a young man of that age, I'm heartbroken. Oh, please. I hoped returning to Paris where our happiness really began would remind us only of the best memories. It uh, was a mistake. I'm being stupid. And it was never like me to be stupid. I've kept it all inside so long. To myself, so many years. Perhaps I... that was wrong. I am your husband. We came to Paris to be happy. I must tell you everything. Today. Now, Carlos, so that we can... Be... I have never asked you to. Now, listen. Be quiet. I was as young as that boy in the cafe. Younger, probably. Eighteen. My first husband, Comte de Meret, he was much older than I. How tall he was. Everyone said, what a handsome couple. Well, I didn't know I was so innocent. I didn't know he was tall, only in centimeters. In everything else, he was small. So very small and petty and degrading, too. It is I who wish it, my dear Josephine. There are certain codes of conduct expected of the titled... You are the daughter of a count, and you married a count. We are someone. The slightest shadow, the slightest familiarity with the townspeople is out of place. But I only said good morning when the butcher tipped his hat to me in the church. Surely you don't Innocent mind if I... Innocent to you, perhaps. But I need not tell you what familiarity breeds. There are certain liberties a lady of your station cannot indulge in. You may not go rowing on the lake. You may not walk in the public park where you might be seen by the riffraff. You may not, by so much as an eyebrow, acknowledge the presence of any stranger in church or in the town. But surely in church we are all equal before God. Everything I have learned teaches me that. Madame, we will hear no more of this. Now you may ring for your maid, dress yourself for the day, and let me see some progress on that embroidery when I return. When will that be? Tais-toi. Josephine, do you really expect me to hold myself accountable to you? I'm joining the Duc de Lorenguay. We shall not have ride over to the Prince de Masson's and perhaps a little wine. I'm, I'm spoiling you, my dear. Don't become accustomed to asking how I spend my time. If I wish you to know, 
I shall inform you. Yet you expect to know all about me. I not only expect, I demand. Since you demand, may I tell you something you do not know about me? Well, then be quick about it. We are going to have a baby. Is that true? I'm afraid so. Well, why afraid? I shall have the best midwife and doctor for you. A baby. So be it. Nothing to fear. Oh, a figure of speech, which has much truth in it. Wait until I tell the Duke and Masson. <laughs> They'll be envious. I dare say they'd like an heir. But I am the only one around here able to produce one. <laughs> right? There, there, little one. Please stop crying, please. Rosalie. Yes, madame. How is he? He seems so unhappy. Why do I ask you? You're not getting married. Oh, now, 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 little one. What's the matter? Of course, he needs changing, that is all. Oh, how clever of you. How did you know? We were 11 children, madame. When I was 10, I took care of my two baby brothers while my mother and father worked in the fields. How proud they would have been to see me attending to madame in this great chateau. Oh. But have they been dead a long time? The plague took them the year I came to be the scullery maid for the Count, your father. A sad year for all of us. My parents were also taken. Wealth and title does not stay the hand of God. I miss my parents also. Oh, is he not beautiful? See, he's going to sleep. Such a funny face. Ravish! Run out and tell this table boy to rub down my horse well. Well, ladies, how is it with you? Ah, the child is sleeping for a change. Uh, Rosalie, fetch me some claret. Yes, sir. <laughs> what a day for a hunt. A magnificent, absolutely oh, magnificent. Oh, no, you've wakened him. Little <laughs> one, shh. There's nothing to be frightened of. That baby's becoming a nuisance. You've been drinking. Of course I've been drinking. And it's running away with your tongue. The baby is taking entirely too much precedence in this household. Too much. Uh, too much. Here is your... Uh... Oh, oh, he's asleep on the floor. Well, we must try to put him to bed. Oh, help me, but... Oh, I can't budge him. Oh, I can't... Nor can I. He's, he's such a big man. Three o'clock in the afternoon and look at him. He sickens me. Rosalie, let us take the baby in its pram and go into the public park. I've never been to the park. Shall we do that? Like you mean leave the master lying here on the floor? Well, why not? He came to it by rights. Oh, how wonderful it is to walk like anyone else under the trees with my baby. How free. At home, I feel like such a prisoner. Madame is being very frank with me. I am only her maid. Oh, who else do I have to talk with? You're a woman, Rosalie. My only friend... When my father was alive, our chateau always rang with music and laughter. But when the plague took him and Mama, it took all his friends, and I was suddenly completely alone. Well, can we sit on this bench? Certainly, madame. And then, one day at church, this tall man spoke to me. He knew Papa, he said. And could he offer me his condolences? Oh, how sympathetic he was then. How kind. And I was lonely. He pursued me, and at last we, we were married. Where did all his kindness go? You know, money can harm more than it can help, Rosalie. I beg your pardon, ladies, for the impertinence. Uh, yes, monsieur, what is it? I have lost my way. I am unfamiliar to this park, and I would like to find the location of the prefect of police. The prefect of police? Uh... No, I, I have never had occasion to go there. Are you an escaped convict who wishes to give himself up, monsieur? You are joking, are you not? How did you know? 
You are? No, not, not a convict, no. I'm a prisoner of war. One of your Napoleon's victims. I am Dumbagos de Feredia. But I know of the family. My uncle was ambassador at the court of King Joseph. Bagos de Feredia is a noble family. I was in Madrid when Napoleon took the city. And now, if you please, the uh, prefect of police... I have given my word to report every day while I am required to lodge in your town. Oh, you see the iron gate at the end of the path? Ah, uh, see? Uh, go through it, and you will be on the Avenue Saint-Marie. Turn to your left some 50 meters, and where the French flag is flying is the Marie and the police. Ah, thank you. And I hope I have not disturbed the peace of your lovely day. God be with you. Good day. <sighs> Well, what did you think of the gentleman? So, uh, so quiet, so, so noble. Did you notice his eyes? Like two flames. Madame, you look pale. Are you not well? Oh, yes, I'm well. I'm very well. The sun is going down. We should return. Strange. I would have said the sun is rising. Pardon? No matter. Yes, we must go home. Ah, how can I sleep with that endless caterwauling? Josephine, Josephine, wake up. What is it? Do you not you hear? Where is the nurse? Oh, I I'll, I'll go and look. The nurse had to go to visit her sick mother. Sick mother, that. I've had enough. And Josephine, tomorrow I wish you to move all my clothes upstairs to your father's suite. Bed, shirts, boots, everything. It was good of you to attend Mass with me this morning, Rosalie. Oh, I should go more often. This is our chapel. We sit here. Oh, look, madame. Is not that the young Spanish grandee we met in the park? He must be very accomplished. He's reading the book. But why do you say accomplished? The book is in Latin, madame. Oh, madame. He has raised his eyes. He's looking at us. Oh, goodness. He's smiling. Oh, madame. You are smiling, too. Shh, shh. Let us be silent and pray. Perhaps our prayers will be answered. <laughs> great French writer, Honoré de Balzac, upon whose tale this account is based, once wrote, Cruelty and fear shake hands together. Cruelty and fear together. That may explain the strange viciousness the Count demonstrates towards his young wife, which oiled the wheels of fate towards what happened next. I shall return in a moment to bring you Act Two. Take a trip? Gonna haul the trailer. Gotta run down and pump up the air shocks. Car will ride funny till I hook up the trailer. Get to where we're going, unhook the trailer. Should I deflate the air shocks? Car will ride funny if I don't. If I do, when we get ready to leave, I'll have to run down and pump up the air shocks. Car will ride funny. Wouldn't it be great if there was an overload device that gave you a good ride, even when you're not carrying a load and never needed adjusting? There is cargo coil from Moog Automotive. It's not a shock, but a coil spring engineered to give you a level, comfortable ride for car, van, or light truck. The price isn't a shock either, and there's nothing to adjust. Cargo Coil does it automatically. It adjusts to the load and carries it where it should be carried, in the suspension system. Cargo Coil from Moog Automotive. Moog. M-O-O-G. The right name for wheel-to-wheel -wheel security. True Value Hardware Stores offer the best friends a painter ever had. True Test Painting Accessories. True Test Painting Accessories will make your painting job easier. For example, a True Test 8-piece paint set comes complete with a 9-inch roller cover, frame, trim brush, extension pole, paint tray, brush holder, and more for just $5.99. All you add is the paint. True Value Hardware Stores also offer True Test Paint Brushes in a wide variety of sizes, like a big 4-inch standard varnish brush with flat edge trim for just $4.98, or a True Test 2-inch varnish enamel brush for just $2.79. 
You'll find a complete selection of quality True Test painting tools only at participating True Value hardware stores. No matter where you live, you'll find a True Value store nearby to serve you. be more tragic for a young woman of the 19th century than to feel life has cheated her and there is no way out. Divorce, separation, what we in our century take for granted was unheard of in those days. And then to nail her to her unhappiness, a stranger enters her life whose eyes, she tells us, speak of fire, to feel, to love, to devote oneself to someone is the life of a woman, says our author Balzac. But not to be able to love. Is there any escape? Let's find out. Do you remember the first day we walked in this park, Rosalie? Two months ago. The leaves are turning now. You were wheeling the baby that day, not I. And there's the bench we sat on. Madame... Do you know that every time we pass this spot, you always point to it and say, there is the bench we sat on. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> oh, how sad I was that day. I thought my life was over. You've been such a good friend, Rosalie. Oh, can we turn here? I keep forgetting. Uh, the gates are this way, the boathouse that way. What is the hour? A uh, little before two. We are in time. The usual one hour, madame? Yes. The usual precious one hour. We have walked it out to the minute, the little count and I, uh, very slowly. Two full circles, and that is an hour. <laughs> uh, we shall be uh, waiting at the big chestnut tree. But I, I don't see his boat. What time did you say it was? Just two, madame. Well, where is he? But he's always here, waiting. Uh, I must go and talk to the boatkeeper. Perhaps he's seen him. Well, is that wise? You will have to part your veil to talk to him. You may be recognized. I'll be careful. Ah, the veiled lady. Your uh, brother left word he cannot come today. It is a pity, for I saved a very fine little boat for you. Even the oars are new. He left no other message? About Friday, perhaps? Message? Message. No, no. Well, let me see. Nothing? No. Well, no, no, I think, I think there was something, but uh, what was it? Oh, I beg of you, please try to remember. Uh, oh, yes, your brother. He left a package for you. I know just where I put it. Ah, here. Here it is. It's only a little package. Well, thank you very much. Now, if you should ever wish to leave anything in my care for your brother, I'd be only too happy. I must go. Thank you. You are most welcome, my lady. Oh, uh, what a Friday. Should I reserve a boat for you? Three o'clock as usual? Rosalie. Rosalie. Wait, wait. Madame, what is it? He left this. Oh, I'm sorry to breath. He left. This, with the boat keeper. Oh. oh, oh, how beautiful. Crucifix. What does that mean? Uh, th that, that black wood, what is it? Ebony. Christ is in silver. Where will you hide it? Hide it? Oh, I should say not. I shall, I shall place it on the wall above my bed. Oh, but supposing the Count, will he not ask where it came oh, from? Oh, I'll make up a story. Come now. We have almost an hour to enjoy the park and think wishfully. I shall walk the pram, Rosalie. And dream about my friend with the fiery eyes. And you shall dream about your fiancé. Happy dreams. Dreams? While we are awake? Those are the best kind. Where are you? Ah, Rosalie. Where is everybody? A bed, sir. It is very late. Oh, is it? 
How's your mistress? She's not well. She remained in her room all day, in bed. Did she not get up at all? It is the same sickness. Ach. Did the doctor come? He can find nothing. You had old Boyer here? Is she asleep? Perhaps I should go in and have a I would not suggest she be disturbed. Very well. I'm deucedly tired myself. Here, taper this candle, will you? I can light my own way upstairs. Good night, sir. What is... What? What's that? She's awake. Good evening, my dear. I thought I heard you laugh. Oh, I... Why are you out of bed and fully dressed? It's such a beautiful gown, no less. Madam, why at ten o'clock at night are you wearing such finery and a necklace and earrings? You're, you're very late. Am I too late now? Tell me, is that closet door moving or is it my imagination? What? The closet door, madam. It seems to me I saw it closing. Is it your maid? I was speaking to her a moment ago. Rosalie? Are you in there? I thought you told me your mistress had gone to bed. Rosalie! There's no one in that closet. Did I hear you ring, madame? Ah, Rosalie. I could have sworn you were inside that closet. You wish me to help you undress? No, she does not. I will help her undress. You can go, Rosalie. I, I shall put in my curl papers myself. Uh, as you wish, madame. Good night. Good night, sir. What is it, husband? Why do you walk around so? Do you have bad news? Or are you ill? Madam, there is someone in that closet. No, monsieur. Well, then, let's see for ourselves. <gasps> Your hand stays me. Why? Husband, if you should find no one in there, all will be at an end between you and me. As you wish. No, Josephine, I will not open it. In either event, we should be parted forever. What further reassurances do I need? Ah, that crucifix over the bed. I cannot remember seeing this here before. I know you are a Sunday churchgoer, madam. I've often heard you pray before retiring. Then, swear to me on this crucifix that there is no one in there and I shall believe you. I will never open that door. I swear it. Louder. Take it in your hands and repeat. I swear before God that there is nobody in that closet. I swear before God that there is nobody in that closet. That will do. Hmm. Fine piece of work. Very artistically wrought. Where did you find it? At Duvivier's. He, uh, when the Spanish prisoners of war came through town some time ago, he bought it from an old monk. Did you know? Ring for your maid. Well, do as I say. But I don't need her. I can undress myself. Oh, so I notice. Your miraculous recovery. Ring again. Ah, Rosalie, come over here. I know that Giron wishes to marry you, but that you've told him no until he becomes a master mason. And that means the mayor, a good friend of mine, must sign the license. I want you to go to Giron's house and fetch him. At this hour? Yes, 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 without delay. Tell him to bring his trowel and tools from the coach house and bring bricks and mortar here into this room. Tell him to speak to no one and make certain no one sees him coming here. If you do this, I can tell you, my girl, your fiancé will become a master mason tonight. I think you have enough bricks, Giron, and the mortar seems also in good order. Now, I want both you and Rosalie to listen carefully. You see that closet door recessed in the wall? I want it bricked up. Solidly. Understand? Now, Giron, tomorrow morning I shall arrange for you to have a passport which will enable you to go abroad. England, South America, wherever you should choose. Giron, I will give you 6,000 francs for your journey. 
I will give you an additional 6,000 on condition you will speak to no one, ever, of what you have built for me tonight. We shall arrange, as first step, to meet in Paris when I shall give you, Rosalie, 10,000 francs upon your marriage to Giron. This, too, on the condition you hold your tongue. If not, no wedding gift. Now, begin. Rosalie, uh, come and brush my hair. I want not a word spoken in this room. I'm going to fetch some wine. I shall leave this door to the hall open. I warn you. Rosalie, I'll give you a thousand francs a year if you will tell Giron to leave a crack there at the bottom. Of course. Madame. Friends, take no money. Cap, what's that? Someone speak? Oh, it would go faster if Rosalie would assist her fiancé. I, I, I will stir the mortar. <laughs> Very fine work, Jerome. Hmm, eight o'clock. Splendid morning. Very careful, good work. I shall certainly attest to the mayor you are a qualified master mason. Merci, monsieur. I'm off to the mayor. As Giron, come with me. We shall get your certificate and passport. Oh, the crucifix. May I borrow it for a few hours, my dear? Eh, uh, Duvivier's, you said, is where you bought it. He will find out. What does it matter? It will take time to go there and more time at the mayor's. Now, quick, Rosalie. There's a pickaxe leaning against the garden wall. Go and fetch it. Oh, oh can one hear this? To reassure myself, all is well. Oh, can this be heard? All will soon be well. The pickaxe, madame. Good up right loose where he left a crack. Rosalie, water down that mortar. And afterwards, we'll, we'll replace everything. I watched Giron. I know how to do it. Good. One brick already pried loose. Oh, it'll go quickly now. <laughs> how surprised the Count would be. Could he see me now? Surprised? <gasps> oh, no, madame. I'm not surprised at all. Oh, God. Lay the Countess upon her bed. Gracious, would you look at that, Chiron? There appears to be a slight defect in your masterly accomplishment. You were promised the position of Master Mason. I would immediately fall to and make masterly repairs. Especially if one's very future depended upon it. Yes, the Count had tricked his wife. Laid a trap for her, baited it. And she had been caught in it. However, never underestimate the self-control of a desperate woman. Josephine, the young countess, had far from given in or given up. Stay with us for the extraordinary third act, which will begin in just a moment. When is a week ten days long? When it's National True Test Paint Week at True Value Hardware Stores. That's when... Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you, from May 25th through June 4th, you'll find True Test paints at special prices, like True Test Woodsman's Solid Color Latex Stain for just $6.99 a gallon. It enhances the texture of rough wood and beautifies smooth wood, indoors or out. Woodsman's Solid Color Latex Stain lasts twice as long as conventional oil stains and comes in 21 rustic flat colors. True Value Hardware Stores also offer True Test Weatherall Acrylic Latex House Paint for just $8.97 a gallon. It protects and wears like an oil-based paint, resists weather, stains, and smog, and comes in white and 35 Jamestown colors. Get True Test paints at special prices during National True Test Paint Week, May 25th through June 4th, at participating True Value Hardware Stores. True Value, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Tell them Pat Summerall sent you. This is WBBM Chicago. When you save at Northwest Federal, they have lots of ways to thank you. There's a special club that encourages kids to save, a club for senior savers, and special programs throughout the year for all Northwest Federal savers. Plus, if you deposit $250 or more, 
At any Northwest Federal Savings Center, you can choose a gift free or for a special low price. Gifts to help you with all of those spring and summer activities, like a True Temper lawn rake, a Burgess Fluidic Sprinkler to help shape up your lawn, a Structo Barbecue Grill for cookouts, or an aluminum folding table for all of those picnics that you're planning. There are over 30 gifts to choose from, free or at greatly reduced prices. This offer has been extended through June the 10th and is available at any of the five convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. The errors of women spring almost always from their faith in the good, or their confidence in the true. Think about that. And had you known such a woman as a young countess, could you not, in your heart, forgive her? In the light of today, hers was but an innocent friendship with a mysterious Spanish nobleman. The Count de Marais, unforgiving, unforgetting, was a prisoner of his own revenge. As Act Three begins, twenty days have passed. A cat plays with the mouse. Good morning, Josephine. It seems to me you are recovering. You've had a bad time of it. And so I have been a faithful husband all during your indisposition and have never left your side. I... Uh, you have been here, yes. I, uh, I, I remember, but it's so long ago. I forget. What it was that happened. <laughs> You're not the only one plagued with forgetfulness. Do you remember old Duvivier, the jeweler? Talk of absent-mindedness. That day you fainted so inexplicably, I had sent for him. Look, I said, this crucifix, I understand you sold it to no, my wife. No, don't, 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 I don't go on. Not I, he said. Very good work, very old, too. Probably from some Spanish nobleman's private chapel. No, oh, don't, please. And now don't. I have good news. I have asked the doctor to pay us a visit, and I'm hopeful he will pronounce you better. Come in. Monsieur le docteur is here. Ah, good. I shall go out to speak with him. Uh, uh, see what your mistress would like for le petit déjeuner. Oh, madame, I'm so glad. Good morning. You look more like yourself today. Rose, what is it? Where is my baby? <gasps> the closet. Wait, madame, but... don't upset yourself. <laughs> Everything is fine. Where is my baby? Oh, bring him to me. He is being well taken care of. Do not worry. You had a very high fever, madame. We could do nothing. But how long have I been like this? Tomorrow it will be three weeks. And... And the wall Giron made. Oh, madame, it is terrible. All the bricks in place the way he repaired it. Your mind was so troubled. You had no idea what was happening. And where is Giron? He has left the town to keep his part of the bargain. I have... No, none of this. Not since the morning you fainted. The doctor came. He said you should rest. Every day you would wake up and look at the closet, and then you could not get out of bed. Twenty days. Twenty days? Gone from my mind. Where is your fiancé? He was going to leave a little hole for me. I said uh, to you, madame, he is abroad. And did you bring me my pickaxe? Hurry, get it. Madame. Uh, 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 tell me about Giron. Is he well? Twelve thousand francs. We could not turn our backs on that. And ten more when we marry. Besides, if we were to tell the authorities, the Count said we would be charged, being accessories to the fact. The fact? What fact? Oh, God in heaven. I cannot go on. I, I don't understand. I can't go on. The doctor is here, Josephine. <laughs> Josephine? Madame la Comtesse? Send him away. Send him away. I don't want to see anybody. Leave her to me, please, Count. And the maid. You, you too, mademoiselle? Yes, of course. You know best. 
Dear me, I thought she was on the mend, but she has not changed much in the past few weeks. <laughs> Irrational. I cannot think what possessed you, Count Desmarais. You should have sent for me long before. Now, go, both of you. <laughs> yes, certainly, Doctor. <laughs> Madame Josephine, you remember me, Dr. Boyer? I attended your dear father and mother. You can trust me. Madame... Medicine can only go so far. It is you who must help us. And in that way, we can help you. But I'm so afraid, Doctor. I do not wish to remain in this house. Afraid of what? You're afraid of my husband. I must leave here. Will you help me? Oh, you are too weak now, Josephine. When you get your strength back, that is all that should concern you. Do you see it? The wall. Those bricks, they're moving. Look at them. I cannot look any more. They move when I look. Oh, please, help me. Help me. Here. Come closer. Over my head is that crucifix. Take it from the wall and give it to me. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm going to keep it hidden under my bedclothes. That will be our secret. Of course. Uh, Madam, let me talk to your husband. There's no time to lose. Go right away. Right away. And then all will be well. Certainly. Do not worry. Well, how is she? What do you think? In all truth, monsieur, I fear for her. Her pulse is weak, her mind wanders. But I, I have tried my best to give her comfort, days and nights. Yes. We must move her to the hospital. There she will have professional care. Monsieur Le Comte, has anything extraordinary happened to her in the past month? Uh, an apprehension, a fright, some sudden despair? Bless me, no. I can't imagine what it could be. Doctor, we lead a most quiet and judicious life. Nothing but peace and calm rules in this house. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, I shall make the arrangements to have her brought to the hospital today. As you think best, Doctor. <laughs> I never thought I should live to see such a day. You must calm yourself, mademoiselle. It does no good to dwell upon unhappiness. Ah, uh, young wife. All she wanted was a little joy. That she should sicken and pass away, even in a hospital. Mm. It was a shock to us all. Overnight she was gone. Was there no way of saving her? One must have the will to live. How long does it take to the cemetery? Not long. Look at him. The Count. Up there in the carriage ahead, reining the horses. How stiffly he sits in the coachman's seat. It was his wish to drive the casket coach alone. He has a black heart. Why do you say that, mademoiselle? I have my reasons. He is more troubled than he bargained for. He did not wish even to have a final look at her body. He told me to seal the coffin, and then this morning he would not let the pallbearers touch it. <laughs> he and I alone placed it in his carriage. I believe he is mad. Who else but a mad person would have a rifle beside him in the coachman's seat? Imagine taking a gun to one's wife's funeral. Oh, mademoiselle, there are too many questions and too few answers. What? <laughs> Stop this coach! Count, can you hear me? Count! It... Oh, my God. Oh, God. I knew it. Oh, I knew it. The rifle must have gone off accidentally. The, the horses went wild. Are you sure? The Count's neck is broken. Well, now, my dear, do you feel better telling it all to me? But it is not all. And who better than you to know that? Shall I recall for us the end of the story? Yes, that's the part I most like to hear. The Countess swore truthfully on her crucifix when she said there was no one within the closet. 
for she knew her house well. As a child, she had played hide-and-seek in that very room of the chateau, and knew there was a false panel at the rear of the closet, and in back of that, a secret door leading out to the garden. She had only wanted to make certain the young nobleman had found it and escaped when the Count caught her chopping at the brick wall. And he had escaped? Of course. He had no idea the Count deliberately set about to torture her. Being a man of some honor, the Spaniard felt he could not return. The Countess lived through those three weeks and, to save her own life, arranged to be taken to the hospital. Doctor, boy, please sit by me. Closer. I appeal to you. Anything, of course, Josephine. I believe I am married to a wicked, insane man who would stop at nothing to inherit my lands, my wealth, everything. There's nothing I can say to those of the law which would help me. I've decided to forego all my worldly possessions. I will give them up for my freedom. What can I do? Arrange for my death. Josephine, what are you saying? There are those who die here, who have not enough money for a respectable funeral. Put one of those unfortunates in a coffin in my name. I, I don't understand. If I leave this hospital and return home, I am as good as dead. He will see to that. What are you saying? Tell my husband I have died. Let him bury the woman in a decent grave, believing it to be me. I don't ask it of any doctor. I beg it of the only man I can trust as much as if he were my own father. And so it was done. Twenty years ago. We came here to this same little hotel, from there to the church of St. Magdalene, and were married. Everything that was black turned white. Where there was once darkness, my dearest Carlos, now there was light. Uh, now, my darling, uh, surely you can let the past rest. No, I cannot. All these years we've searched for my son. Where is he? When I saw that boy in the cafe, it brought everything back. Then we must return there. Come along, let us not waste a moment. I shall ask the proprietor, that, that boy, boy who was, who was here. here this morning, huh? Ah, yes, yes, the young, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles. When my wife and I were at that table, he was talking with you. <laughs> Funny you should call my attention to him. He was asking who you were. Does he come here regularly? Oh, three times a week for breakfast coffee. Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, uh, he will be here uh, eight o'clock in the morning, the day after tomorrow. Ah, so shall we be here at that time. And so our curtain descends. Not ending the story for all time, rather with a hope that after 20 years, Countess Josephine, now happily married to her Spanish grandee, will perhaps be reunited with her own son. I shall return with a postscript in a moment. Are you an unpublished author? Do you have a book length manuscript ready or almost ready for publication? Or do you know of anyone else who is an unpublished author? If so, note this toll free number 800 821 7700. You're invited to telephone Vantage Press, a leading New York subsidy publisher, for a free illustrated brochure titled To the Author in Search of a Publisher. Just call this toll-free number, 800-821-7700. This brochure explains how you may have your manuscript printed and published in a matter of months. The number is 800-821-7700. Whether your subject is fiction, nonfiction, poetry, or even scientific, specialized or controversial, this 52-page brochure shows you how to arrange for prompt publication. To get your copy, dial 800, then 821-7700. The phone call is free. If this is your first book, you'll find this free brochure especially valuable and informative. Dial 800, then 821-7700.
I love my skin, so I don't play games with it. When I slip into my bikini, I always slip into my Sea and Ski. Any sun product will help me tan, but Sea and Ski gives me the kind of tan you want to touch. Sea and Ski penetrates, moisturizes, protects, helps your skin stay smooth and supple. So get the tan you want to touch with Sea and Ski, the sun specialists. We know your skin. Come on, sun, it's you and me and Sea and Ski. If you think it's impossible to get a brand new Singer sewing machine for $95, this is your once in a lifetime chance to do it. Because until Saturday, our Fashion Mate machine is on sale for just $95. That's the lowest price ever for this machine that zigzags, sews hymns, and does much more. So come to Singer now and take advantage of this once in a lifetime event. This Fashion Mate machine for $95. Price is optional at participating dealers. human power is a compound of time and patience. Honoré de Balzac. And to him our thanks for writing this tale. Time and patience did reunite the Countess with her own son, Charles. And you should know that it pleased her that he had no liking for gambling or hunting. Young Charles' only interests were the search for knowledge with which he could help others. And here ends our story. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Roberta Maxwell, William Griffiths, Cork Benson, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. muffler don't compromise my size the next time you hear that noise don't look around cause it might be your car the next time you hear that noise the sound of your muffler announcing you're coming neutralize it my size it and mine is today the next time you hear that noise don't compromise my size Midas size your car and you'll never have to buy a muffler for it again. Because at Midas, if anything ever goes wrong, we guarantee to replace the muffler free for as long as you own your American-made car. The next time you hear that noise, don't compromise. Midas size. In case you didn't know, the 41 Chicagoland Midas dealers can install mufflers on most foreign cars with the same expertise with which they've been installing mufflers on American cars for the past 20 years. CBS News. South Moluccan gunmen are releasing over a hundred children who have been held hostage in a school in northern Holland. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The gunmen began freeing the children in mass after several dozen of them developed stomach infections. From Holland, Bob McNamara has a late report. Not all the children have been released yet. At the school a short time ago, we saw ambulances lined up a block away, moving one at a time, about one every five minutes, going up to a door and taking one child in each ambulance. The terrorists decided to release the hostages after a mysterious infection began developing yesterday among the children. By midnight local time last night, four youngsters had been taken to hospitals, wheeled out of the school on stretchers. Officials say the poisonous infection is not fatal. Some 50 of the children, those well enough to leave the school immediately, were taken away in buses to a Red Cross center there to be examined by doctors. Still, the terrorists continue holding the five teachers taken hostage during the first moments of the siege that began last Monday morning. 
The release of the children is what the Dutch government had called its first priority, and certainly the terrorists' bargaining power has been greatly diminished now. Bob McNamara, CBS News, Austin, the Netherlands. Dutch officials say the Moluccans continue to hold six teachers in the school, and about 10 miles away, another band of Moluccans continue to hold a hijacked train with 55 passengers. Both incidents began Monday in a bid for independence for the Gunland's homeland in Asia. More news in a moment. We can't wait, we can't wait for tomorrow. Today, more than 90% of our nation's electricity is transmitted over aluminum cross-country lines. Why aluminum? Because it's more abundant and less expensive than other excellent conducting metals like copper or silver. Soon, aluminum may be called upon to do the entire job of transmitting and distributing our electrical power. Strong, efficient Alcoa aluminum, today and tomorrow. We must transmit the power to our homes and factories. Gotta make the highway safe for folks like you and me. Our cars should be lighter for the most from every mile. We must clean up and recycle and make the whole world smile. We can't wait, we can't wait. The House on Thursday gave the nation's automakers the delays they wanted in meeting federal clean air standards. The lawmakers approved major revisions in the Clean Air Act. In Detroit, Rob Marr of Station WWJ talked to Philip Caldwell of the Ford Motor Company about the House action. It didn't surprise us, but we're very delighted with the results, and we hope that we can get a similar result in the final bill. Do you have any reading on what you expect from the Senate? Well, not really, except I'm sure that the uh, action of the House should be helpful because it indicates the, a very broad base of support. The automakers argue they need more time to meet the clean air standards. Douglas Cussell, head of the Environmental Protection Agency, says he's heard that before. They've got a bit of a credibility problem because that's what they always say. You know, this is about the third time they've done this now. And uh, the fact of the matter is the, the record of the auto company is pretty unambiguous. They have done only what they've had to do when they've had to do it. And uh, they only do what the, ultimately what the Congress tells them to do. And frankly, the Congress is only going to tell them to do what, what the Congress feels the American people want them to do. Council says foreign car makers seem much more willing to meet clean air standards than the domestic car makers. The Council on Wage and Price Stability says the price of auto parts rose sharply during 1974 and 75 because manufacturers were trying to catch up from the effects of government wage and price controls. The Council was responding to complaints by major insurance companies. They say auto parts have increased at an alarming rate during the past six years. Two former Surgeons General and ten organizations have petitioned the Food and Drug Administration to regulate cigarettes and to require a doctor's prescription to buy them. They say cigarettes contain drugs, but a spokesman for the agency says tobacco is not within FDA jurisdiction. Now this. Dream and dream, we all do. Working hard so they come true. You can get a helping hand at Kmart stores. They understand. Kmart is your savings store where your dollar buys you more. Ever Ready and Kmart want you to know. They want you to know that EverReady transistor batteries in the popular 9-volt and AA pin light sizes are discount priced at Kmart. So get ready for a whole summer of portable fun by stocking up on EverReady transistor batteries for your portable radios and cassette tape recorders. Remember, EverReady batteries in the popular 9-volt size and in AA 4-packs are discount priced at over 1,100 Kmart stores across the United States. President Carter is getting ready to take a nine-hour cruise on a nuclear submarine. The president has arrived for a six-day vacation off St. Simons Island off the Georgia coast. On Friday, he'll take his cruise aboard the USS Los Angeles, a nuclear attack submarine. The president, who is an Annapolis graduate, says he's looking forward to taking the helm of the vessel. This is Doug Poling, CBS News.